Oh, my first fish. You always, whenever you start a session, you always worry about your first fish when you're going to catch it, if you're going to catch it. I'm making a program today about pellet fishing on the pole using special pellets, expander pellets on the hook and fish meal pellets to feed with. And the venue I'm at is called Rookery Waters and it's close to the small village of Pidley in Cambridgeshire. This lake, there's about three lakes in the complex, this lake is called Magpie Lake. There's a bit of an island out there which I'm fishing to, it's only about 11 or 12 metres away. And I always, always wonder what is the first fish going to be? There's quite a few, there's lots of different species of fish in here, there's carp, there's tench, roach, rudd, chub, it's a bit of everything. This, is, this feels a, a reasonable fish. Just trying to get it to the surface, it's flying around, it's lovely, I love your first fish you always think, am I going to catch? And then the float dips and you, you're into a fish and you think, what is it? Oh, it's just, it looks like, it looks like a beautiful, just caught a glimpse of it, it looks like a beautiful ghost carp. Yes, it is, it's a beautiful, beautiful ghost carp. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that is a, we try and get it out, it's got a sort of a, a bluish back on it. Well, the hook just flew out then. It's a ghost. It's like a bluish. It's a strange fish. Like a, it's a mirror. It's got this bluish tinge there. I've never seen one sort of quite that colour. Look at that beautiful big tail. No wonder it, it fought well. Great just over a pound, but terrific fish to start the session with. Straight in again. They certainly love that bait. As I said, I'll put a bed of pellet down, so I expect big fish to move on to it. And this is another, seems like another good fish and it, it's amazing really how you, how you can catch even in these cold temperatures. It was, it's been a really cold, it's early spring and it's been very cold so far. Elastic doing its job. I don't think it's as big as my first fish but it went straight away so. It's a good sign that the fish are there. I've cupped in with the pellet, I cupped in a few maggots just to help try to spark the swim off. Doesn't hurt and then pellet usually sorts out the bigger fish at the end, the bigger fish move over it. This, one is, this one's going everywhere, I can't control it. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. Well, it's, I, do you know, it's a, it's a very similar looking fish. It's a very, very similar looking fish. It's the same, same species. Very similar looking. Let me just take that hook out while it's in the net. I don't want to, don't want to damage the fish. I've never seen these before. It's like a, a common. You get common ghost carp, but these are, are mirror ghosties and they're blue. It's another one, look. You could almost say it's its twin, if you look at it. Once again, beautiful colours, but looks identical. It's funny how they've moved over that bed of pellet. Real hard fighting, what a scrap. Lovely fish. That's great. Let's have a look at the, the bait that I'm going to use today and that I am using. This is my main feed for today and, and for normal winter, early spring, this, this would be the bait that I would use there. Two mil, so they're quite small, we call them two mil or micro pellets, and they're a fish meal carp pellet. The particular ones I use, I'm using today 
are from Vandenind. There's a, a kilo pack there, and that, that's usually more than enough for one session. The only thing you do need to do with them, I've already done this already, is because they come in a dry form, you need to, I usually put mine in a bait tub, in, say in, in a three pint bait tub, and then pour a little bit of water on and mix it round. And so you soak the pellets so they're a little bit, if I squeeze them pellets, they'd, they'd almost stay like that. Just they will stick together because they're slightly damp. They're so small that if you don't do that, the surface tension will just hold them above the surface so they won't, they won't sink. Even these only just sink and they're a little bit softer so the fish will, will take to these. They're already partly softened. They break down, they're very fast breakdown. If I, if I left them in the water, say for three sort of, yeah, probably three quarters of an hour, they would be completely gone. So they're fast breakdown. The next ones, I don't soak these, but these are the, are the same. These are just larger, they're four mil. If you're catching bigger fish, a lot of big carp in your peg, then you use these four mil carp pellets. I don't usually bother to dampen them because they're a bit heavier because they're four mil. You can also loose feed these four millimeter ones if you want. They're a bit heavier, so if I wanted to loose feed over where I was fishing, I could. And they're the same, they're exactly the same there. Just carp pellets. They're not, they're not trout pellets, they're not high in oil, they are specially developed for carp fishing. So there's four mils and two mils. That's usually about right for a, for, for a session of fishing. And there's plenty enough there for both. A few maggots, just to sometimes, I always, I never come anywhere, even though I'm making a program on pellet fishing, I never come anywhere without maggots. Uh, cup a few in just to help get fish around and, and spark your peg off. Never hurts, always bring maggots. And in this small tub, and I'm going to show you later how I do these, these are the main hook bait for today. There's two different sizes there. There's, there's four millimeter and there's two mils, some tiny two mils. You can just see three mils, two and three mils there. And this will be my main hook bait for today. Once again, hard fishing. You need very, very soft baits. I'll show you how to prepare them. I'll put a little bit of uh, flavoring in there as well. And to hook them on, to hook a pellet on, I'm starting off on these, I'm catching on those four mil at the moment, which is, they really are soft. The hook only just goes in these, really. Just get one out. I hook them in different ways, but my normal way would be to come in from the, from the flat end of the pellet and then tease it round onto the hook. Just tease it round my fingers. They're very, very soft. So it sort of sits with the point of the hook just coming out. You can see the shank of the hook there, but the point of the hook just coming out. So doesn't take anything to penetrate the fish. The only thing you've got to watch, they're very soft, so be careful when you're shipping out that the pellet doesn't drag off the hook. Usually, I will look, when I get to where I'm fishing, I will just lift it up and look to make sure the pellet's still on. But they, they, they've, I've done them pretty well, but you can see the, the pellet is still on there. Just see it and then drop it in right over. I fed with a, with a cup full of those two mil pellets and a few four mils in with it, not many, mainly two mil pellets. So I've put down a, a bed of small fish meal carp pellets and I'm straight into another big fish. It's lovely. Just letting the elastic do its work and then slide him back. Let the elastic do the work. Another good fish. Just all big fish apart. Lovely. Really are fighting well. <laughs> I love it. I love catching fish. Oh, it's a barbel. 
Oh dear. They said there was barbel in here, but I just didn't uh, didn't know. It's only just just hooked. Let me just try and get it out. Just hooked. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful little barbel. Probably only about half a pound, I should think. Really did fight. But now this is a fish you'd normally catch in rivers. Don't normally associate it with still waters. Look at it, four, four barbules. But a perfect example, and it looks really fit and healthy. Obviously like still water, this one. Let me show you just how to prepare expander pellets. A lot of people hear about expanders and they don't really know how to prepare them. Expanders come in a, in a dry, hard form and you have to sort of soak them to make them sink and, and to really make them sort of fluff up and be really soft for the fish to eat. Now this is a, a part of an expander pump. I usually half fill it with water. The good thing about this is you can add your own flavours. Whatever particular flavour you like, I like this one. It's a liquid super scopex. And I put it into the water, so a couple of squirts, just to go into the water you're using. That's all you need, that's enough. It's a typical beautiful carp attractor. The pellets themselves, they're called ringer bag up pellets. And if you look at them, they're in the, there's the hard form. This one, these ones, once they expand up a four millimetre, they're smaller at the moment. So I put those in the, in the water and they float. Put a few more in there. I usually do a couple of sizes, depends. If it's summertime, I'll use four and six mil. And in the winter, I usually use these are ringers again, cool water, and these are three mil. In fact, they're smaller than three mil. They, they hardly come up much above two mil, really. Just have a look at those. They're quite small. And you can mix those in, it doesn't matter. Because once you see them in the pot, you can pick out which ones you want. If you look at those at the moment, they're all floating. Now the, a pump, the idea of a pump is that you use a vacuum pump to take the air out of the container and as the air comes out of the container it sucks water into the pellet. Just put the lid on there and the pump and then you, you suck the air out of the container. Just suck it out. It doesn't take long to do. I usually, normally I do this in the morning just before I leave for my fishing session. So I'm sucking the air out. They're still all floating, but then once I press the button there, you see some of them start to sink. There. I usually need to do it two or three times. So you do it again. There'll always be one or two that are left floating, but I'll show you what to do with those in a minute. So see the, see the ones that have sunk there? Then they, they, they come up to the top again. Just as you suck that out. There's a little, little catch on the top there where you release that. If you don't release that air, you can't get the lid off. Sort of seals it there. They've nearly all gone down. There's a few more, so I'll do it once more. You can imagine it sucking that flavour into the... Takes no time at all to do it. Just release it again. They all come to the top. Usually shake it a bit. There's hardly any floating now just a few in the top there. And I usually tip those away, the ones that can just tip that. Tip some of the water away as well. Tip nearly all that water away. This is a bit that you have to be careful of. And then a one pint tub is usually good for this. Tip them into the tub, they're still all sinking. Now you need to leave a small covering, I'm going to tip a bit more of that away, you need to leave just a small covering of water 
which then will soak into the pellet, just cover them. If you look at that, they're just covering the pellets. Just leave them for about 10 minutes and then they're ready to use. The important thing when you're fishing is think, when am I going to feed again? And I, initially I put a good cup full of bait in and I think it's time to feed again. I've been chatting away and, and, and it doesn't take long before the fish will mop up all the bait that you're using. So I'm putting these four mil pellets, two mil pellets in, two mil soft pellets, a few maggots, not many, just, just to help spark, spark off the fish. And then some four mil fish meal pellets on the top. So quite a mixture in there. There's a, most of it is the two mil feed pellets, then a few maggots, and then a few four mil feed pellets, just in case there's some big fish about. They will hold the bigger fish. If I was catching all big fish, then I would feed probably all six mil pellets. Just the pellet size depends on the size of fish you're catching or that you want to catch and that are in the water itself. So I've plumbed up, I'm fishing just off of the far bank where the water drops down to its deepest point. It's still, still a good depth there. It's coming off a, a very, very, quite a sharp slope down and I'm sprinkling that. Imagine a big cloud. Pellets are almost like ground bait, really. They are, they're a compressed, they're a compressed ground bait. So don't worry when you're on a fishery and they say ground bait barred because pellets really are just compressed ground bait. Just a different, different format. And they're made mainly from fish meal. And then I can go straight out with pellet again. Pellet on the hook. Just fed, so sometimes when, you've, when you just feed, it takes a little bit of time, the fish back away and then they come in on it. Remember what I said about being careful when you go out, as you go out, as you ship out, just make sure that pellet doesn't come off. And then drop it right down. Still on there. Always have a little check, still on there. And drop it right over where I've put that cup full of bait. If you think about it, I've just cut bait in exactly that area, that real tight area. And that's what's, you know, that what is why a pole is so brilliant. You can feed in such a really tight space that any fish that are around will be there. So if, as long as you put your hook bait in that area, then if the fish are feeding, you'll get a bite. It's even more important when, it, when, when water temperatures are low and fishing is hard. If you can keep everything really tight, then you can have a really good day's fishing on even, even in difficult conditions. Because every fish that's feeding is in that, that one area that you've, you've cupped your bait. The fish around there, you've just got to encourage them to take. It just shows you how fish respond to feed. I've, I mean, I've only just cut that big pot full of bait in and they're there straight away. It was on one of those four mil expanders that I'd prepared earlier. The ones that I've done just now are not quite ready yet, but now they, now they, they're all hard fighting fish here. Oh, that's lovely. Just a pleasure working here today. Well, you can't really call it work, can you? I've got that elastic, it's, it's just controlling the fish. It's powerful enough to control the fish and yet still not, not lose them when you, when you strike. It's got enough cushioning effect really are hard fighting fish. We've had a couple of lovely carp. I wonder what this is. Just saw a big boil on the surface. Oh, it looks like another. Ah, it's another one of those. Is it one of those bluish colored ones? Mm, similar, I think. Another mirror. 
He's really, yeah, it's another one. Another, really, there must be a lot of these in the water. That's perfectly conditioned. Hook, did you often get this with pellet? Just lip hooked. There. And because you're using a soft pellet, you've got nothing to get in the way of the, the hook penetration. So you almost only just have to lift into the fish. Let me just show that to camera. Another one of those beautiful mirror carp. Absolutely perfect condition. I love that, that orange tinge on the tail. Look at that. And the big tail, that's where the fighting power comes from. This is terrific fishing. The hook I'm using today is, they're, they're a fairly new pattern from Drennan. It's called a, a carp maggot. And although I'm fishing pellet, it's, it's a wide gape hook and fairly light, so it's ideal. You can either slip two maggots on or a pellet, so I like it for that. So that's a hook, and it's at a size 18. And hook sizes vary, an 18 in one hook is, is much smaller than an 18 in another, so you can never tell, but that's a goodish wide gape on there for hooking on pellet. Probably just about right for a, a four mil pellet. Then I've got two pound hook length there. And then joining onto the main line, I've done a twisted overhand knot there. Twisted figure of eight, just a tiny knot. And against that knot is a number 11 stop. It's just a small lead. Can slide, can slide that up and down the line very easily. Just sits on that knot there. And then above that, probably five inches above that, another number 11. And then I've got spaced out from there, I've got five, up to the float, I've got five number nine stock leads. They're, they're quite bigger. There's one there, one there all the way up to the float, another one, another one, just spaced out to give me a slow fall through the water. Quite often you can catch some big fish as the pellets dropping down slowly, so I like to space the lead out for that. Up to the float, it's one of the new carp floats from Browning. This one is 0.3 of a gram. It's called an F1 carp. So it's, it's a very, very robust float with good strong eye. It's got a carbon stem, and the, flo uh, the float bristle is hollow. It's hollow so it picks up the light, but also very, very sensitive. The main line I'm using today is an O, it's O sort of 15, so it's quite a strong line, about four and a half pound. If I'm catching big fish, then I'll step up the hook length a bit. And then something like about 18 inches from the float tip to the connector. It's very, very windy today, so if, if you fish a really short line, it would be moving about all the time. And then I've got a number 12 elastic. It's a grey hydro elastic, and I've got it all the way through those two sections there. So there's a lot of elastic, so if I catch a big fish, it could probably come out sort of 10 metres if it really, if the big fish roared off with it, but it's still fairly soft for these sort of pound, pound and a half fish, it's perfect. And then the pellet itself, which we're using is just the, the normal four mil. I'll show you how to hook that on again. I know we've been through it once before, but just again, then you can look at the hook size a bit. There's the hook. I usually go into the middle of the pellet on, the flat, on one flat end of the, the, of the pellet and then tease it round. And it's so soft. I think that's why pellets are so good for fishing, especially expander pellets, because they're so soft. Fish only just have to get hold of it. 
and you, you hook them. Really steady as you ship out. Just keeping the front end, always keep the rig in the water. So easy to tangle a rig if you lift it up and it starts to, to move around. And then when you get to the end, just check your bait. Check your pellet's still on. It is. And just drop it in the water. Drop it right over where I put that last big bed of feed. So today, at the moment, I'm putting a big volume of feed in, big pot full, and leaving it, which means the fish, it keeps the fish down. We're not loose feeding at all, just a big pot. So if there is any fish feeding, they'll be right where that bait is, right on the bottom. And just holding it. Can you imagine the fish searching around amongst those small pellets and then it's amazing how the fish have got on that bait. Just got a little bit, there was some sun earlier and it's just got a little bit colder now, a bit of clouds coming over. But the fish are still feeding, doesn't seem to affect them. The thing that affects fish more is water temperature. You know, if it's too cold, then they just don't feed as well. The warmer it is, the warmer, the, the more the water temperature, then the fish always feed better. Another good fish though. Oh, nice, hard, such hard fighting fish here. Just trying to get it, get the fish just to get its head up. Oh, <laughs> there's certainly some pretty colours. There's another, another mirror. Mirror a bit bluish, a bit goldish, a bit I don't know-ish, really. Get that hook out. Oh, it's hard. I'm trying to get the hook out while the fish is in the in the net. That's it. Just hold it up for camera. It's another one of those blue. Mirror carp, <laughs> but tinged at the bottom with orange. Strange, there really are some lovely fish here. Just shows you. It, all fish feed on pellet. They love pellet. I mean, they've bought up on it, so. But that big tail again. Look at that. Just why it's such a hard fighting fish. Imagine that when it's weighing five or six pounds. Perfect, absolutely perfect, beautiful condition. It's time to feed again, and that's what you've got to make sure you do, that you keep putting feed in. So I'm going to go out again with that good pot full. I mean, the fish are coming well now, so I'm going out with that good pot full of bait again. Exactly the same formula. Mostly two mil feed pellets, but a few maggots and a few bigger pellets just to hopefully, if there's some bigger fish around, to hold them. Nice and steady as you go out. Watch, make sure when you come off that pole roller, that the pole doesn't flip up in the air. I've picked a marker on the far bank where I'm feeding, so I'm in exactly the same place on the pole each time where you're holding it. That cupping kit is the same length as the rig I'm using. Just pour these. Just imagine those pellets just drifting slowly down through the water. Most of them will get to the bottom, but some will be intercepted on the way down. I'm going to try, I've got a slightly lighter rig that I've set up and I'm going to try that. It's the same hook, but slightly lighter line, lighter elastic. It's a matter of getting the tackle balanced. If you, if you go on a lighter hook length, lighter main line, then you can come down on your elastic. And this elastic in here is between a six and an eight. So it's a, a lighter elastic, it's softer, but still good for catching most fish. Pellet hooked on nicely. And it's a smaller float as well. I'm gonna try and Get that bait to drop down through the water slowly over that bed of feed that I've just put in.
drop it down. Really got to watch it's got shelving up steeply on the other bank. Checking that that hook bait's still on. And then just dropping it over the bed of pellet. This is a slightly lighter float and smaller shots, more spaced out. Wind's just dropped a little bit for a minute, but it's so it's not quite so rough. I'm still fishing a little bit over depth. Sometimes. When it's really calm, you can fish exactly dead depth and you can see your bites a lot easier. But today, the water's a little bit rough, so I'm fishing just over depth, just to make sure the pellet is sitting on the bottom and not moving too much. I'm almost having to hold that pole just to keep the pellet in position. I don't really want it moving too much. They fish don't expect the pellet to be running along the bottom. If the water's flowing, then they will, but if the water's still underneath, you need to keep your hook bait still as well. Of course, that fish has got me in those reeds over there. Only a small fish too, but I've got lighter elastic, so the fish can run a little bit more. It's only a small carp, this one, I think. But still plenty of fish. I try to sort of let the bait drop more slowly through the water. Oh, this is just a very, very small carp, this one. Real tiny one. But, it, but even that, because I've got that light elastic on, went in those rushes on the other bank. Might have to use my discorder on this fish. There. Another one of those mirror carp, but a really small one. Still lots of action though, I love it. Loads of fish. So I've changed the rig. Let's have a quick look at the rig that I'm using, that I've changed to, and talk a little bit about the elastics. I'm on the same hook, the same hook pattern that I was before. This is a a carp maggot from Drennan, size 18. The line a little bit, it's, it's the same, the hook length is the same, about two pound breaking strain. But I've put a shot on the hook length here. And quite often I do that with these stots, the same as I was using on the other rig just now. But these stots, they're so soft. They don't damage this high-tech line, so you can squeeze them on the hook length. And if you want to, if you're getting really delicate bites, you can pull that shot right close to the hook and see almost every little movement. At the moment, it's still quite hard, so I say quite hard, we're still getting lots of fish, but it's, I've pulled it away from the hook a little bit. The more bites I get, then I pull that, I call that the tell, telltale shot. That gives you indication of when the fish are near your bait. And then I've got a twisted figure of eight knot there. Just above that, I've got another shot. So these are number 11 stots. And I've got a fair, fair gap then to this number 11 shot here. These are all number 11s I've got on here, spaced out all the way up. I've got two or three a little bit closer together there but just to get that fall through the water. And up to the float, same float. You can tell this is my favorite pattern at the moment. This F1 carp with the carbon stem and a lovely hollow bristle. At the tip here, I've got a figure of eight loop Make sure you do that figure of eight loop there onto a connector. And then this lovely, this is a browning hollow elastic between us, they call it between a six and eight, but it really is soft. It will only, it will go back in, but only just, but 
but perfect for these size of fish we're catching. Now, when it, we've been potting in feed today, quite heavy feed, but if you want, you can, you can use a small pot like this, just a small pot, and clip it on the end of your pole to feed pellets with, so you can put a few pellets in each cast if you want to. If you look at the back of it, you've got a cross section there. This just clips on the pole, comes in various sizes. This cap pulls off, but what I do is I, I call them up like a pepper pot, a small pepper pot, but I cut a small hole in there so that I can pour the bait, the feed bait that I'm using, I can pour that in the top. But this will pull off and you can fill it up. But I find it easier to just leave that on and pour the bait through the top. Then that clips onto the pole, clips on, if you clip it on up your narrow end and then just pull it back, push that elastic will go back, just pull it back down. It wants to be just set back a little bit from the tip of your pole. Then before you, the first thing you need to do when you're using these, these pots is bait up before you fill the pot. Oh, these, these pellets that I did a little while ago are perfect now. I'll use one of those. Just bury it in the pellet itself. Once you've done that, then if I'm fishing, say I'm fishing at the moment with two nets, then I usually put them out to the side, one to one side, one to the other, so that I can drop that pellet in the water. It's very easy to hook your net if you're not careful. You've got to come back a little bit to, to feed. So I'm going to put a few pellets, just, they will go in do spill one or two, but they'll go in to the top of the pot there. And then I can feed. You use this more when you're fishing, quite often when you're fishing on the drop and you want to keep putting bait through all the time. Take care when you ship out, watch when you come off the end of the pole roller, keep it still, because one flick up and then you can lose all the contents. Once again, I'm going to go over that area where I was fishing, so lift up, drop, over the same area where I've been putting the big potfuls of bait, but this time let's, let's try and draw a few fish in. You just Once you get to the end of, of where you want to fish, just turn your pot over, and then if you tap it, you'll see the pellets will sprinkle out of the pot So the, these are just called small pole pots and you can see it's right down and round where you're fishing. So now there's a few little pellets dropping down there where your bait is. We had a bite straight away. Just started to go then. Well, the fish is straight in, it's come into those loose feed pellets. Just dropping them over. What I'm really doing is we've got the, the base feed down and then we're dripping now with that little cup, dripping loose pellets over the top. And you see that number, number eight elastic, really doing its job. It's really playing the fish for me. Just ease the pole back there, nice and steady. That's when you know elastic is working well. When you've got a good amount of, a good amount of elastic out, then you know it's working well. Really had some surprises with fish today, and I don't know what this one is. Just see it top, I think it's a barbel. I think it's another barbel. They really are hard fighting fish. But it took those pellets, settled over that bed of, ooh. oh, <laughs> He's a barbel, I just saw it come up just now, just saw its head as it came up, but they do fight. Oh, that's a nice, it's a lovely fish. Oh, oh, that's a beauty. You can see already it's just perfectly hooked. There, yeah, beautiful fish. Oh, look at that. That's a good barbel, that one. Really, really tough, hard fighting fish. I think they fight, pound for pound, they fight harder than carp. 
Oh, yeah. Really tough fish. Slim and streamlined, built for rivers, of course. But they, they, they seem to live perfectly well in still water. This is great. I think I'll go straight out again with that. Just show you that again, exactly how we do it. So the pellets on, I'm using one of those pellets that I did earlier with the Scopex flavour inside. Just teasing it round the hook. Just like that, so it's almost completely buried. And then you put your bait in the water, so once it's once it's baited up, then in the water, a few pellets just through that, that hole. As I say, I like to cut a small hole in the top. Just says so pulling that cap off each time. And then you don't have to fill the pot up. I've only put in half a cup in there of, of the two millimetre feed pellets. So in this way, you're feeding your swim all the time. So every time you catch a fish and go out, there's more feed going in. So all the time you're attracting fish into the area. As I say, it's just like loose feeding with a catapult, except everything is so tight. But just make sure you go, still keep fishing in the same area that you put your main feed in. That's where the fish will be anyway. Just drop your float in and then tip over your pot, tap your pot and you can see the, the pellet sprinkling round all round the float, and then bring your pot back up again and watch for the bite. So where I've just tipped those pellets in, imagine that they're sprinkling down, attracting fish in. There's still a big mass of feed on the bottom to hold the fish. It's working really well now. The fish are, are lining up on that drip feed so it's really good. And they're all good quality. I mean, they're all, none of them are coming in that easy. They're all fighting well. This one's really fighting. Oh, it feels a good fish. When I, when I hit it, I thought, that feels a really heavy fish. And it is. Oh, that, that's really going. Oh, dear. Oh, that's really pulling some elastic out. Just shows you how that elastic works. And you can get big fish in on these fairly light elastics. Just let the elastic do all the work. Just getting a little bit later in the day now. A lot of cloud covers come over, but that's when probably slightly larger fish start to feed. Even, even when it's cold, you'd expect to catch more in the afternoon. Once again, I'm not going to guess what sort of fish it is. Really, really fighting well. Shot off though, took a load of, load of elastic. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this session. But that's, uh, that's what pellet can do. It can get you some bigger fish. It's a lovely, soft, clean bait to use. <laughs> this is brilliant fishing. Just trying to get the fish. It's not, do you know what? It's a good carp, but it's not a massive carp, and that really is fighting well. It's built for speed, I think, this one. Of course, I'm on lighter elastic, so it allows the fish to move a bit more. Oh, that's a nice fish. These are the sort of fish that we're after. Took that pellet, liked that, seemed to like that lighter float and the, and the bait dropping through the water. That's a nice fish, probably, probably around about two pound, I should think. Good quality. Just a common carp, 
hook just in the mouth. I'm going to hold it in the net first because it's really got to watch you don't drop these fish. So you can hold it in the net to unhook it and then I'll use two hands to show it to the camera. There's the hook out. If I keep the net just Just a little bit of a damage, maybe from cormorants or something, but there. Lovely, lovely condition. Common carp. So that's a, you know, that's a really good fish. Beautiful. Just shows you what you can do with pellet. Slip that into the net. Now when you're when you're fishing and we're fishing with expander pellets, there's also another alternative. You can, you can use a bigger pellet. If I use a bigger pellet, then I usually use what they, what they call jellet. These are from Vandenine. And they're six mil, but they're a little bit tougher. They come ready made. So you don't have to worry about them. You just tear the top here. I don't have to use my teeth or cut it. And then you can open up the pack and reseal it so you don't have to use, usually if I have a pack of these, they probably last me five or six months. You can open up the pack. Now these are a different type of pellet because they're, they have a preservative in them to keep them soft. They're a soft pellet, but they're a soft hooker pellet not as soft as expanders. So if, it, if you're catching bigger fish, then you can use one of these on the hook and they come in different flavors. There's, there's strawberry flavor and if, if it's really warm in the summer and I know the fish want something sweet, then I'll use that. So let's try one of the, I'll put a few of those in there. Let's try one of these. And I quite often do this. If I know this, we've just had that bigger fish. If I know there's bigger fish about, then I'll, and hook them on just the same. But they're a tougher pellet, so usually you will catch bigger fish. And they, with these, you can, they're that tough that you can use them almost when you're ledgering or when you're waggler fishing. They, they stay on the hook. But because they're tougher, you would normally catch bigger fish with them. Whether we'll catch one or not, I don't know. I'm gonna, so I've baited up. I'm going to still put our two mil feeds in to get the fish round. We need them round but we've now got a tough pellet on the hook. So if there is a big fish there, this will catch it. So when you're fishing pellet, there's all different size pellets and different ways you can do things. And usually when the water gets warmer, the gelets are better when the fish are a little bit more active and say small fish are taking your very soft pellet, then you, then you put a tougher, harder pellet on. So if I was going out and catching roach on those soft expanders, then I'd put one of these halibut pellets on. Just go in to see if anything's going to take it. Every time, just sprinkle that. And you see how it just goes exactly, just a little tap and it's all round the float. Look at those pellets dropping all round the float. Perfect, how else can you feed? as well as that. And as I said, with, with the two mil pellets, you can't lose feed them at 11 meters anyway, even if the wind is behind you. And then just sit that big, you imagine how that can stand out amongst all those small pellets, that big six mil halibut pellet. If there's any big fish in your swim, then you'll catch them.
Everything I'm doing today is working. I slipped on that halibut pellet, that bigger, tougher pellet, and I thought, sometimes you don't know whether you're gonna get a bite or not because, it's, because it is cold and they work better in much warmer weather. And we're into another fish, and it feels like a good fish as well. Another reasonable fish. Usually always bigger fish that take, take these baits. And this will be a good one to finish the programme on. I mean, it's, it's been a fantastic day. We've gone through how to feed with pellets, how different fish react to them, how to feed with that small pot, keeping the bait tight. Yeah, another lovely carp. Lots of these carp today they really have been good. Just lifting into the fish to strike, to catch them and how to catch fish in these colder waters using pellet and feeding really accurately. It's so important. Just remember that feeding is the real art of angling. That's what gets the fish into your area and lets you have a, a good day as you sit on your box and fish. Just let you have a terrific day of catching fish just by feeding perfectly. Another lovely common carp, just over a pound. What a fabulous day's fishing.